Hi there, Chris here with another quick tip for y'all. In this video, we're going to look at painting the tiny skulls on little backpacks. And so here's a couple examples of some Marines who have already been finished and have the little skulls on the backpacks. Now, it seems kind of elementary, but for some of us, you know, it is a little bit of a difficulty. As you can see here, little Black Templar guy colored that skull in gold. Ultramarine, color that one in gold. These are really just kind of, you know, uh, in tune with the trim of the shoulder pad. And so here's an Iron Fist, or Imperial Fist, and look at that. He's got a little red skull on his back, matching the trim on his shoulder pads. So, Dark Angel here. We are going to color the little skull on his back. We're going to start off with some Mephiston Red. We're not going to really be thinning this down with anything, other than just a little bit of water. Just going to use our detail brush. And we're just going to basically base coat this entire skull. Now, some people might be having trouble. Well, what do you paint the little skull? Do you always just paint them white? Do you paint them whatever? I would often color them the complementary color. As the back of the model tends to, you know, not get as much attention, even though when we're playing with them on the tabletop, you know, most of the time you're going to be seeing them or, you know, your opponent or, you know, passers-by are going to be looking at them. And so really you do want to take care of these things and introduce a bit of color. Often that's why, you know, you pick the comp bench color, pick the color that is on the shoulder pad trim or what have you. Even maybe even a glowing skull. Who knows, right? Just give it some visual interest because otherwise, you know, the back is really quite boring on these guys. So we're going to highlight the little skull with a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet. It's not too bright a color change. And it's, well, it's not, you know, terribly difficult to highlight. And we're just going to catch the forehead, the cheekbones, and a little bit of the uh, teeth, the upper part of the mouth. And this is really quick. Just grabbing just a little bit of color, slapping it on there, and then we're going to be done with it. And it's as simple as that. Get a nice bright red skull. Now to throw in a little bit of shade and take a bit of that brightness down a bit, if need be, we're going to use some Agrax Earth Shade. Not too much, of course. Still using our detail brush, and we're basically following the edge of the skull where it meets the backpack. And then we're putting a little bit into the eye and nose sockets and around the teeth. We could just hit the whole space, but you know, don't need to shade it really that much. And we don't want to obscure our nice bright highlights. We don't want to really destroy any of our transitions and anything like that. And so we set this little fella to one side to dry. And once it's dry, you can see it's gone down it's really quite muted now we could highlight it with some more uh you know colors but it looks fine we're not you know overly concerned with those kinds of details and what have you so we are going to paint the skull you can see there's a big empty space on the backpack to get a start we're going to use administratum gray a little bit of medium to thin the paint down just a little bit so it's nice and easy and flows well from the brush. You can see it's a fairly heavy load on the brush. And of course, this is just so that it flows nicely and not too thick. Of course, you might have to do one or two coats because when it is thinned and we're painting it on top of black, black is going to still show through, especially since we are going to try and get like a bright forehead on the guy. And so we will have to just fill it in a couple times now when we're drawing on the skull we're kind of going for really a mushroom kind of shape it's kind of round and bulbous near the top and then it has a little stem that's where the uh, upper part of the mouth and teeth are and with the edges that come out from the sides those are really where the cheekbones are this is really kind of a fast and easy way to achieve this look that, that it's a skull And really, that's about it. It's it's just 
fill in the color, create that sort of mushroom shape. And now I'm not talking like a hard mushroom shape, you know, where it's straight edges at all. You can see it's almost like a mushroom, maybe like a light bulb, that kind of thing, right? Next, we grab some white scar and some medium. Let's grab a little bit, and it's not too much. It's not a heavy load on the brush. Just enough to thin it down just slightly. And now we're going to create the highlight. We are just going to follow where the forehead would be, where the nose and cheekbones. Really, we're just going to concentrate more on the cheekbones and the teeth. And this is just, again, this is just a highlight. So it's, and the light gray and the shadow um, and the white, you know, creates that illusion of shadow, a little bit of depth. And yeah, it's all just for effect. You don't even have, you really don't even have to go into this much level of detail. You can simply start with white and create the shape and then come in with uh, our next color, which is Abaddon Black. We use a tiny amount. We don't need a whole lot on the palette. It's really just a quick little dab. Not really using any thinner. We're just using the dampness of the brush just to take the paint down just a little bit. And we go into steady hand mode and we are going to draw in the eyes and nose and separate the teeth if need be so for the nose kind of draw almost like a little triangle in there very lightly and for the eyes it's almost you can almost do a semicircular but really it's more of um, more of a trapezoid shape and as you can see like you know we're, we're picking out the uh, cheekbones as well and you can see we're just picking up the teeth and that's essentially it that's just drawing a skull. It's easy as that. And so hopefully you found that quick tip video informative and useful. For the next quick tip video, leave a comment below. Or if somebody beats you to it, give that comment a thumbs up. And we'll see you in the next video. Happy Wargaming.